Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Uh, sorry, my voice is still a little raspy. <clears throat> I'm still trying to get my voice back. It's not there, but uh wanted to get this, uh, this game in, so I'm struggling through it. Got some lozenges to help me out. Probably should stop these, but it is what it is. Uh, we are going to be running some, <clears throat> excuse me, Lost Mines and the Mad Mage today. Um, I'll let the players tell you what happened last session. Um, but, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get to it. Welcome to the game, everybody. Thank Who you. would like to go over what happened last session? Where we're at. I'm too emotionally traumatized. I'll give it a stab. We went give through Xanathar's went through Xanathar's compound, uh, numerous false starts. Finally got a tip on where Xanathar was. We fronted Xanathar, fought Xanathar, and in a Hail Mary pass, uh, thanks to Ray and um uh, Kugra, uh took the Xenathar boss down at the last possible second. King Kong bowling style. Yes. Ugra also had noticed um, that as Xanathar was crushed by the rock that was thrown, on some of the tentacles there seemed to be little rings of gold, some with gems in them, that have fallen to the ground back in this area where he died. So as combat has ended, you hear the captain say, <clears throat> So? It, is it dead? Better be. Uh, by the way, uh, you're going to be able to control Kugra until your next uh, character comes. Oh, okay. And Cougar will reply, I, I made a perfect throw. It's dead. Unless you want to act Cougar, I don't care. No, no, you do you, man. You got no character, so instead of you sitting there, you might as well play him, role play him, all that good stuff. Best accent ever. Bad, shitty Scottish accent. Can't be worse than mine. <laughs> Fact. Challenge. Well, if we're gonna, he's done. Should we? You getting out of here? Um, can I do my aura of vitality on the group first? Sure. Uh, the the captain doesn't need any. He's uh pretty much unscathed. I could definitely use some, so. And Cougar could use some help, too. Looking a little battered. Okay, sorry. I'm just looking to see what I'm rolling. Um... Um, Savage, was this the one? Because I do this with um, four, four d six per well? round. Four d six yeah, per round. Ten so, rounds. Yeah, so that's forty d six. Forty d six. Yeah. Is that enough to max this out? Um, Oops, I did not mean to post that again. I'm so sorry. It'll be close. 149 health. Uh, Ray needs 40. You need 43. And Cooper needs... Actually, it might. I think it will be enough. Yeah, because Cooper only needs 36. So f say they're all 40, it's only 120. So Okay. Because I don't have a, that a lot of HP. Ah, uh, you're close to down. Yeah. 
Um, okay. Um, while Aura Vitality is going on, Zin is going to walk over to uh, Val's Ashes and try to do what? Uh, I, yeah, what are you scooping gonna, them into? Um, if I have like a plain bag, I'll just start scooping them into a plain bag. I don't know. Ocean vials left. Whoa, those are small. Um, well, uh, I don't. I never had any potion vials. I only had the ones that I took from people. So I have the empty ones that are with the venom poison in it. But I don't know if I'd feel great about putting them inside an empty venom vial. How much ashes is there? I don't know if you've ever bit, seen pre cremated remains. Uh, yeah, we have a dog on a shelf here. Uh, I'm talking like human sized. But it's like the same. Thing. Yeah, my you don't my have grandma to take was it all. my grandma's cremated. But also with that, they have like the box and stuff too. So this is Sans box, no box, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Like I've, I've dumped them out, and it's it's about ten pounds worth of weight in ashes, and they are probably about a foot cubed at least. It's you much just larger take... than any urns I've seen, but sure, if that's fine. Um, I have that extra bag of holding I can put them into that's empty. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because urns are only like uh, half a they foot tall. They don't give you all the remains when they put them into an urn. When they put them into a bag so you can spread them yourself um, illegally, yeah, uh, it's, it's about a foot squared. We also don't have to take them all. We can take some. I mean, I can fit them into a bag of holding. It's infinite space. Or not actually, but you know. Enough. Close enough. Yeah. Scooping them up. Yeah, you finish scooping them into this bag of holding, and you look at your hand, and it is just covered in white ash. Kind of try and shake it off, and some of it kind of sticks to you. It is what it is. You know. One second. One second, guys. Thank you for the raid, everybody. I'm sorry I'm a little hoarse. I uh, lost my voice this week. Uh, we're running some D&D. I &D. Uh, appreciate the, the raid aiming for you. Um, just to give you guys a heads up, um, I don't do a whole lot of talking um, to chat just so I don't break immersion um, during the actual game. But um, give you a little intro. I'm the Savage DM. I run D and D. I play Tarkov, Halo. Um, I just pre-ordered Stormgate and Space Marine. They come out in um, July thirty-first and the fourth. So by all means, stop in. Um, I usually stream Friday through Monday. Um, so this is just a little heads up. Um, but uh, thank you for the rain, and uh, we are going to. Uh, Get back to the game i hope you enjoy it we just started so we got uh just under four hours with the play left sorry i just got a raid so i just want to do a little intro and then give them the i don't uh speak the chat during d <laughs> yeah you good you good um <clears throat> yeah you uh you get a lot uh some of valorant's ashes just stuck to your hand you try to shake them off but can't get it clean. It's kind of a uh, sad moment. Because you realize that you are eventually going to have to um, wash it off. And it'll be like he's gone all over again. <clears throat> but as he's doing this, what are the rest of you doing? Um, is anyone crawling into this cave to get this stuff off this thing? <laughs> I don't know. Is anybody doing that? Because I can do it. I'll climb up this wall and crawl in there. Sure. Um, 
Is Cougar still polymorphed? Oh no, I guess you uh you drop concentration on that for the Aurea Vitality. Um yeah. it's cool if uh this it's about twenty feet up, so Cougar can probably help you kinda of like uh he's strong enough he could kind of toss you upwards towards it. Um at the end of this hallway, you see the destroyed body of Xanathar. Where there was once an eye, there's a massive rock. Um, what little of is left of this creature is mangled and broken. You can see his, uh, his extremely wide mouth with his um, extremely long, razor-sharp teeth. He's no longer moving. However, you do catch a glimpse um, through the blood uh, covering this creature's body. You do see a glimmer of gold on one of his eye stalks. Okay, is it, uh, like, can I just... Does it slide off, or would I have to, like, chop the eye piece off and then take it off? I want like, you to I'm give cool me a nature. Na actually, uh, uh, you can do a nature or an arcana. You're pretty sure that if you take the time... You could probably harvest some of these eye stalks as well. It might be useful. Okay, can I shout down to Zin because he to see if he would help me harvest some of this stuff? Because I'm not great at it. By all means. Yo, bruh. Um, Zim reply back. Uh, yeah. As 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 soon as I'm I'm done over here, I'll 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 come assist you. Um, <clears throat> just just give me a moment because I assume I'm actually still doing this at this point. You're you're probably finishing up. Uh, I figure it probably wouldn't take long. You just lay the bag down and kind of scoop Valorant's ashes. Yeah. Okay. Ashes cool. In. Yeah. So then, as soon as I'm done, I'll come head over and give her a hand. Ah, uh, if you're going to be doing that, I'm going to go guard the door. And the um, captain of the guard heads over and you, uh, you can hear the door shut. And he doesn't seem to be moving from there. Perfect. Zin, I would like a survival, please. Sounds good. Um, Ray, are you helping him? Uh, yeah. Advantage. Another one. Bro. Yeah, it's rough. I have a great modifier too, and it still did not work out for me. I want you to give me a D4. Well, that's good. Okay. So you get four stocks. I want you to give me four D8s, reroll doubles. Okay, one. No doubles. You are able to get uh, four of the eye stalks. The one that charms, the one that paralyzes, the one that slows, ooh, and the enervation ray. So I'm going to put these in the chat so you can see what they do. Oh, mark this down in your notes so we are aware. And sorry, just to clarify, if we say used one of these stocks in combat, it's a one and done, right? Yep. And it will take two hands to use it. Uh, no, one hand, I guess, will do.
Um, it will also require a an attack roll because it's not an appendage. So you're going to put the attack at probably d20 plus dex. Because you got to aim it whereas it was part of his body, so he didn't really have to aim it. He just had to look. You also, as you are, um, it seems that you were only able to get one ring off without damaging the eye, which is why you did not get the others. So, you have five rings. Are they just like gold rings? Do they have like gems in them or what kind of rings are they? So, um, you guys will not know what these do until you get them identified. However, you got a ring of protection, a ring of evasion. Ring of Fire Resistance, a Ring of Attunement, and a Ring of Invisibility. Uh, okay. Um, the, I assume we have to look in the book to see if they actually require uh, attunement. Um, I will tell you, player knowledge, they all require attunement, except for the Ring of Attunement. Once you figure it, once you get it identified, you'll know what it does. But basically, it allows you to attune to a fourth item. But there's a rule to it, which is explained there in chat. Okay, and then is there anything else in this room that's worth taking note of? Um, there's the goldfish. Okay, can I just like walk over and sprinkle some food in the goldfish and like leave them alone? There's also a chest in the goldfish tank. And sorry, how big is the tank again? The tank is um, nearly 20 feet uh, diameter. And it, so it would be if, like a swim sort of situation. Yeah, it also floats 20 feet up in the air. And it is about 20 feet tall. No, oh, sorry. Uh, Ring of Attunement isn't popping up in my, my guide. It won't. Yeah, that one is okay. a homebrew item I found. That I thought was kind of cool. Cool, cool. Okay, I'll just make sure I put a note of it for now because we don't know what they are, so it's not like we're using them. But yeah, just wherever you're putting a note about it, just make sure you copy that um, description there. Gotcha. Okay, we need to figure out how to get in the fish tank.
the city watch captain says. You know, I got away. And you see him draw his weapon and start towards the tank. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't want to kill the fish. It's an innocent bystander. We don't need to kill the fish. It's a goldfish. You can buy him for two coppers down the street. Yeah, but he didn't do nothing. He's just living his life, man. I don't know. He looks pretty suspicious. Okay, you said this fish was how big? The size of a koi? Yeah. Can y'all hear me at all? I can now. Why? Were you talking Holy before? Shit. Yeah, dude. I was just going and going and going. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. Uh, Cougar is in agreement that we should maybe just throw something at the tank and see what uh, rolls out. Okay, do we have anything to put the fish in so it doesn't die? A bag of hunting? But I think it needs water, doesn't it? Or butter. Oh my god. Okay, well, Ray's just gonna, like, crawl down this tunnel more. I guess I would already be at the end. I'm just going to act like I don't see it because I don't want to kill the fish. But if it's the only way, then fine. Savage, if Cougar walks around, are there any ladders or anything I could climb with? This here is a um, a platform that leads up to near the top of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's how the, um, the dude in the tinfoil hat was beating him. Maintaining it. Okay. Well, Cougar will climb up that if he can and see if that'll get him over into the tank. After he takes off his armor. Okay. Yeah, he might die in there. <laughs> exactly. New fish. So you take off your armor? Yep. And your weapon. Okay. But Cougar got his hand axe. Well, I said at one point, I don't think you heard it. Cougar stopped and got his hand axe back that he threw it. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, you should have two, by the way. I think you're supposed to start with two hand axes. Okay. So you got your hand axe. Hand axe, and that's it. It's good. Okay. I'll do this fish doesn't bite. If it bites, you kill it. I'll try. Oh, this is going to be good. And then we'll smash the tank and get you out. <laughs> and have it for dinner. Yes, yeah, payback for biting you. Poetic justice. <laughs> I love it. Okay, and you're climbing in? Let me stick my hand up by the top first and see what the fish does. The fish pops up towards the top. It looks like he's waiting for something. I'm looking to see if Cougar has rations. He does. Cougar's going to chuck a ration and broke it up into pieces. Uh, sure. Give this fish some of your nuts and berries and such. Twig and berries, yeah. As you, as he, better they, those kinds of twigs and berries instead of the other kind of twigs and berries, right? Um, uh, fuck. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, remind me of a video I saw once. <laughs> Ew. Uh, it, it was a uh, person with peanut butter on their toe, dips it in the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you brother? think I was talking about? A friend, right? No, yeah, no, random video. Anyways, um, yeah, you uh you get up to the top and throw in some rations. It it comes up and it, it starts eating them as 
sucking them in as they, they drop in the water. Does it appear to have teeth? No, it doesn't. And how big is its mouth? Hmm. Probably big enough for like... Four fists are kind of wide, so probably a human fist. Oh my god, that's what I was going to say. All right, well, Kugra is going to throw his other pack of rations in here, and then while the fish is distracted, try and swim down to the tank, or to the uh, chest. Sure. As you get near the chest. Swim down towards it. Oh, wait, he's probably going to need someone to, like, roll initiative. Help him get it up. Oh, no, really? What's your con mod, sir? Uh, plus three. All right, so you got four minutes of air. Sure, this will be over by then, but guess we'll find out. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. This is partially my fault. <laughs> No, no, this is all your fault. I'm so, so sorry. I'm teasing you, I'm teasing you. It does get, uh, it's a surprise round. We're surprised by this. But then after that, we carry on with initiative. What is your AC <laughs> without your armor and your shield? Taking them off right now. It's going to be... Oh, no! Ten? Ten? Yeah, because he's, he's got no dex mod on him. Right. All of a sudden, this chest opens wide, and you see um, the water around you begins to fill with this um, acidic. Oh, it's a mimic, not the fish. I thought the fish was attacking you. Should have seen it coming. Uh, <laughs> no, that's worse than the fish! <laughs> oh, this is great. This music is horrible for this but it's hilarious wait i have a question can we see this happening you guys are still uh, dealing with xanathar is going to take you guys about half an hour or so um i'm going to say ray you can give me a perception at disadvantage because you are busy Ooh, I get a straight roll because of my shield. Uh-huh. Uh, doesn't does, it, does it have to be in your hand though? My shield, it's always on me. My shield, always. Yeah, is it in your hand? Well, it's sentinel shield, right? I'm pretty sure the yeah. specific rules to it. Hold on. While holding the shield. You're helping Zen. It is not in your hand while you're helping him harvest. You do not hear this. Kugra! Is present? As this mouth opens... Wouldn't the guard see him, though, because he's standing right there and he was also walking towards the tank with his bow out? Yes, but this is a surprise round, so we gotta get this off before anything else happens anyways. As this creature opens its mouth, the chest opens, and all of these rows of sharp, needle-like teeth... Not unlike um, Xanathar's. A purple tongue shoots out towards you. And it hits you. You are... You take 8 bludgeoning damage. And a piece of 8. Use your smaller creature adhered to the mimic is also grappled. And you are grappled, sir. Um, it drags you in just slightly closer as it's getting ready to attack you, or bite you. And at this point, um, Ray and Zen, you both can give me a 
uh, perception at disadvantage. You both hear the captain yell, We need a hand out here. You guys may also uh, roll your initiatives, but you will not be able to act until this round is over. Uh, Cougar, it is your turn. Cougar will attack using his hand axe. Is he disadvantaged since he's grappled? He sure is. That is a hit. And he will use... For my men smite savage, do higher level spells bring more damage with them? Or is it just a... Uh... For smites? For smites. Uh, I think he should already have them in his attacks. Uh... Oh, yeah. Okay. So level one... About that? This isn't an undead, so a level one will do the 2d8, uh, and a level two will do the 3d8. Looks like he only has level one left, so I'll roll one of those in. That's his first attack, and I think he gets a second. Hello? Sorry, I was looking at something. Uh, so 18 and... The 9, unfortunately, misses. Makes sense. And I think that's Cougar for this turn. As it's... Uh, as the... What do you mean? As your axe hits it, uh, you see acid start to leak into the water. Uh, now, because it is water, you're only going to take a touch of this, but... Uh, so you will take three acid damage. Got it. As acid starts to float in the water around you. The mimic pulls you in closer. It's teeth getting so close to your face. You can almost feel it. And then, oh, you do feel it. It bites. Uh, you're able to squirm a little bit, and it takes a chunk out of your shoulder. However, it was still a crit. So, 11 piercing. 14 acid. You feel your skin start to sizzle and bubble. Melt away. Ow. And with that, we are at top turn order. Ray, you're up. Okay, well, I'm going to start by moving. And then it, okay, so since we like took a chunk out of the wall, would there be like debris, like rock debris around me? Um, the wall would be right here where he took the chunk out of. Um so yeah, I'd say probably in these two spaces here there'd probably be some some debris. Okay, because I'd like to try and throw a rock at the tank. Um, like what size of a rock? Like big enough to smash the glass. 
What is your strength? Try to smash the glass. Um, ten. Okay, so this is what we call an improvised weapon. So unless you have a spell that can hurl this, uh, for instance, wizards have something called catapult. I don't know if druids get it or not. Um, uh, I but don't if, think so. If you're just trying to huck this as an improvised weapon, that is a straight strength roll. No proficiency gets added onto this, so it's just your d20 plus strength, which is zero. So give me a d20. <laughs> I'm just checking because I think improvised weapon does almost no damage. Just checking that real quick. One D four, please. You hurl this rock. Um, ooh. Give me another d20 first. Improvised weapons have a range of uh, 20 to, you're sorry, yeah, 20 to, to 40. Okay, so you're at disadvantage, that would be the 10, so you do hit. You manage to, to huck this as hard as you can, and it pings off the glass. You see a very tiny tiny crack up here however it is not enough to quite break it can i yell to the group before my turn's over smash the glass and then sure can oh i didn't roll in captain fucking rookie move man <laughs> listen here <laughs> first day Wow, wow, okay. So, cutting words? And that's when a fireball came out of nowhere and killed everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm we don't water. have anybody to do a fireball anymore, okay? I mean, technically, this is still part of Halister's home. <laughs> um, yeah. Captain says, told you we should have broke the glass. Yeah, 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 you were right. Get to smashing. Ugra. Ugra, realizing he's in a bad situation, is going to attempt to escape from the limit. Is that a contested strength? Uh, it is a yes. Yes, it is. I lost my stop lock. It disappeared on me. You were able to free yourself from this grip. Cougar is going to try and get out of the tank. I don't know if he has that much movement this turn. So, uh, you don't have a swim speed. So that uh, basically makes it, it would be like rough terrain. That would be uh, 15 feet. Uh, right now, you are at the bottom of a 20-foot tank. Got it. So he will start up towards the top then. Okay. He's about five feet under right now, if I count correctly. Indeed. That's Cougar. Zin, don't fuck this up. Thanks. The uh, City Watch captain uses bonus action to reload his crossbow. He then aims it at the tank. Ting! And you can see a spiderweb crack begin along the side of the tank. Perfect. It is still not enough to quite break it. Actually, I guess I should roll the damage before I announce that. Yeah, not quite enough. Zin. Yep. 
I will uh, I'll move up to here. And uh, I should be able to see the tank, I assume. Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to shoot it. Uh, not disadvantage. That's a hit. Uh, yeah, that should be correct. Yes. It breaks. The, the side uh, cracks. And as it does, water spills out. Ugra, you are dropping roughly uh, 35 feet. You and the Mimic both spill out onto the ground. Uh, Zin, since you busted it, I would like you to give me 66. Gugra, 20 damage. As this mimic hits ground, you see its form kind of shift, almost like it absorbs the blow. And it reshapes itself immediately into a chest. Seems like it is slowly trying to get towards uh, Kugra. Zin? Uh, you still have the rest of your turn? Yeah, I'm going to shoot the Mimic. Shoot the Mimic! Oh, God. <clears throat> Shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, <laughs> give me damage. Fourteen. Hey, as you loose this bolt... Well, that's acid, right? Okay. It enters the mouth, and you definitely hear it hit flesh, but you hear it hit something else, too. Something metallic. Got anything else? It's made of gold. Uh, no, that's my turn. Mimic. Waddles on its um on on its legs as it gets closer to Kuka. Seventeen with a damage of seven. Got it. You are once again grappled, sir. And you are prone. Ray. Oof. Um... I need some ranged attacks. That's what I'm learning from this. Okay, how... How many feet of movement does it take for me to jump down this ledge? Uh, it is 20 feet Sorry, high. Sorry, climb. I got climb speed of 20. Um, climb speed of 20, and it's 20 feet, so it would take your full, full tw uh, 20 feet movement to get down. So what climbing speed means is if you got a climbing speed of 20, that means instead of it would being rough terrain for you to climb up, then it would, uh, your movement speed while you're climbing is 20 instead of 30. Oh, okay. Good and good and uh, if you didn't have that movement speed, climbing would cost you double. So it would be just like rough terrain. Every five feet would take you 10. How much damage would I take if I dropped down the seven feet? Because my height plus the distance. Uh, you're still dropping 20 feet. But would I, if I have my hands on the top and my feet on the bottom? Because it would be my, it would be twenty feet minus my height. Well, if, from from the ledge to the floor is twenty feet, so 
if you're dropping yeah savage i think she's talking about dropping or crawling climbing halfway down and then letting go to drop the rest of the distance because she is 10 feet to the, th the thing she can only move uh two-thirds of the way down the 20 feet with her normal movement so she has to drop a little bit to make it to the bottom oh okay so you could only climb down about five feet before you would have to like let go and no, jump. No, it should be two thirds of twenty feet, right? Because ten feet to there, so she has twenty feet left, which is two thirds of thirty. So two thirds of twenty feet would be whatever that is, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, but we do it by increments of five, right? So we'll say you get oh, you ten can't. feet down. No, any any movement is always increments of five. Like you, you, gotcha. you that, no, yeah. it makes sense. Otherwise, you're like doing twenty two point five. Yeah, it's it's way too much to like, remember and figure BG out. Right? Does it by like increments? Yeah. It well, yeah, <laughs> that's because that yeah, it's a video game, right? It's a lot easier for you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> totally. So uh, I I would say you can get uh, ten feet down and then drop. That would be like your max. However. If you were to, you could get further out this way if you were to, like, jump forward. But if you climb and then drop, you're get, only getting to this space. So it depends on what you want to do here. Okay, I'm just going to jump down. And then um, the only thing I can really do is ready my shillelagh, and that's it. All right, roll me 4d6 and take that amount of damage and give me... Oh, sorry, a... no, sorry, not jumping. I'm climbing down. So I'm going to use my whole movement to get to the bottom, and that's it. I'm not going to jump. Oh, and then can I dash and down and dash? Climb down and dash? Um... All right, so 10 feet to get here, and then you're climbing down. Yeah, I'm going to climb. I'm not going to take damage. Okay, so you, also don't you would only get halfway then. Prone. Or yeah, sorry, I... or sorry, you'd have but five feet dash. left. Yes, then that, yes, then you can take, uh, it would take 10 feet of your dash to get down the rest of the way. So you, once you hit the bottom, you still got 20, 20 movement left of your dash. And then I'm going to ready my shillelagh. That's it. All right. Kugra, uh, you can start your turn while I pour some more coffee into my mug. Cool. Cougar's going to cast Sanctuary on himself. Is that it? That's it. Because if he attacks... Well, actually, let's do this. Since it's a bonus action, Cougar could attack twice and then cast Sanctuary, couldn't he? Yes, yes, you could. And we'll do that. Disadvantage for grapple and prone. Uh, so you'll have to stand up first. There'll still be a disadvantage, though. Uh, he is grappled. He's not able to up. Oh, okay. Well, then, he's got a 17 anyway. That's a hit. Give me one sec to check his spells. He's going to use a smite on that. He's going to use a smite on that. There's the damage for the axe. And there's the damage for the smite, it be. One second! That's some good smite damage, sir. Thank you. Like I had any skill in it, but hey, I'll take it. Um, Yeah, it counts as skill, sir. This is how this works. Awesome, I love it. The the great damage can't hap happen if you don't open up the door to the opportunity. There you go.
And do you want to describe it? Joker brings his hand axe down uh, while forcing himself away with his left hand and strikes the mimic across the side, uh, driving his hand axe deep into the mimic and causing acid to splash out uh, across the hand axe in his arm. The mimic stops moving. Because I don't know what mimics do when they die. As this thing um, lies there dead, you're fairly certain, Kura, that uh, when Zin Zero hit it, and when you brought your axe down, that you didn't just hit the flesh of this creature, but something metal as well. Let's peek inside. So, I need an investigation, sir. Because you're going to have to dig through this creature to get what's at it. What's in it? Oh, uh, I got you. Guidance. Got it. Oh, thank you. I don't think I'd make wow. it. Wow. If I do, I'll, I'll help him as well. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, I'm not going to find much of anything. Ugra pulls out Three That's platinum pieces. Said. Wow. Oof. Ow. That was a crit. Three platinum pieces. However, Zin, I would like you, or Ray, either one of you, can give me a history. Um, I'll do it if that's okay with everybody. Give her. It's like tomato, tomato. Okay, okay. You are aware that mimics can pretty much break down anything they swallow. These coins, though platinum, these have a different... um Designed to them than the platinum coins you've seen. Something strikes you, then. This coin is an old coin, probably from more than a hundred years ago. This should have broken down already in this creature's belly. Which leads you to believe that considering this is looks like the home. Xanathar, where would he be keeping his riches? Possibly this mimic that has a coin that is over 100 years old. Hmm. So Z Zin will then look at uh, Kugra with the uh, three platinum pieces he's holding up, and Zin's just like, it doesn't, this doesn't feel right. Are you, are you sure you took a good look? Here, move aside. Hi. Let me take a look. My eyes are not what they once were. Take a look for yourself. I'll, uh, I'll take a peek. Investigation. Oh, plus one for my lucky coin. Sorry, I'm using that. It seems that Kugra did not quite dig deep enough. As you kind of um, trying to avoid getting burnt by what acid is left of this creature, kind of shift the, the makeshift tongue to the side and open it wider, trying not to get cut yourself on these teeth. It looks like can see a lot more coins but you can't really reach them without hurting yourself you might actually have to dissect this creature let's do it can I help him sure I mean you can definitely help 
not really going to be a role for this. You're just cutting into a dead Scalpel. body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to harvest anything at this point. I'm just like stabbing it until like things come out. Oh, I got some rage. I can take some rage out on this thing. A little more skill than that. But yeah. <laughs> you uh you start cutting into this creature and you you separate the bottom half um from the top. You then separate um the left and right side of the bottom. And as you cut through this creature and pull it open, a very large pile of coins piles out. I want all three of you to roll me. Let's start with uh, one D100 each. God damn, Val. Wow. No, God damn, Ray. Like okay, guys. I need you to step it up. I'm the only one that's allowed to have bad luck here, okay? Just like Mondays, dude. You're going to have to carry us. No. All right. Give me another D100 each. Fucking plebs. <laughs> oh, my God. Better? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Except for Val. <laughs> this just sucks, dude. I'm sorry, Val. You're having a you're having a rough one today. Roll bigger. Yeah. I'm trying. Like stretch, Maybe I need some your, blood. Stretch your line out more. Just really give it in your wrist, you know. Right. Find two hundred and thirty four gold coins. Everybody, another D100, please. Whoa, Let's go, Z, that's, that's good. Type it out this time. Two thousand. 160 platinum. You don't find any gold or silver. However, you also find. I'm sorry to interrupt you. What was the 234? Gold. No uh, silver, no copper, but you find. I want Kugra to roll me a d20. Ooh. You find six gems. I want you to roll me a six D one thousand. You find two diamonds worth of 500 gold each. You find a diamond worth 300, sorry, two diamonds worth 300 gold each. You find one small topaz worth about 50 gold and a sapphire. Something swirls in the center of the sapphire, however. As you look at it, and you hold it in your hand, it almost seems to jump side to side, almost like a jumping beam. It's hard to hold on to. This is. Was this game or the other game that uh, somebody found an elemental gem? 
I think it was the I other think game. The other one. Sorry, uh, it's not a sapphire. It's an emerald. And as it's uh, as it kind of jumps, you can see something almost sloshing around on the inside. The gem itself feels solid. And yet it looks like there's water swirling all around in it. This is a elemental gem, emerald, which contains a water elemental. Also, let's start with Zin. I want you to give me a D10. Followed this by, is where my rolls go to shit, everybody. Followed <laughs> by a D100. So, table 10. There's an eye patch. Hey, give me an arcana. You feel like there might be a semblance of magic. Um, but you're not really sure. Find yourself thinking, if only Val was here, he'd know. Sad face. Um, for your notes, uh, needs to be identified, I think. Actually, let me check. Yeah, it will need to be identified, but this is called the Lucky Eye Patch. Two words. I think I'm player to player. Zinc could be really lucky. Ray, D10, D100. Wow. Wow. But my 100 is good. <laughs> You find what seems to be a kind of a tribal mask made of wood and adorned with animal fangs. You can give me an arcana. Sorry, do I give you an arcana? Is that what you asked? Yep. This is definitely magical. Uh, for your notes, you don't know what it does till it's identified, but it is called the Fanged Mask. And Valoran, D10 and D100.
Man, here I'm trying to give you guys some, like, fucking... Some, like, very rare items and shit. And you're all like, nah, yeah, we don't work. want those. Or we don't want those. Did you, not, did you not see my last time I rolled for it? I rolled, like... <laughs> The bow of accuracy. That's a short bow. <laughs> um, let's see. Table five. And 85. Should make a rule that you can use inspiration for loot. Fuck no. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. I'm not trying to give fucking level one some goddamn legendaries. Yeah, we're, uh, we're not level one, we're level seven. Yeah, you still shouldn't have legendaries until at least level 15. Right now, you guys should be sitting at uncommon, maybe a rare or two. I mean, it sounds kind of close to where we're at. I have one rare. This, I, uh, what was your number? For your 100? Sorry, this is a long uh, description. I'm just reading it to see if it's actually even viable. Not really. It's... You want me to re-roll one of the numbers? No, no. I'm looking at what it is uh, just above and just below it. Okay. Maybe we should try it on the table six. <laughs> uh, funny thing is, one is table six. You guys are at a level enough now where, like, if you roll... Uh, I'm going uh, rolling between table six, table fifteen. Uh huh. Um. Val, the thing you find is definitely very um definitely holds magic. Kugra has definitely seen wizards and um. Other things use these types of wands before. This is called the Wand of Relieved Burdens. I have that. You have one of those? Yeah. I don't want to double up, so let me check something real quick. Oh, of course, that's something for a wizard.
All right. Screw the wand. Uh, what you find then is a small golden circlet with what looks to be a diamond in the center of it. This is a pretty common one. Um, you guys definitely would have seen it. So this does not need to be identified. This is a circlet of blasting. That's awesome. I got one of those before too. Not saying we don't want it, just commenting. Those are your three match yeah, I think guidance. I used to have one too. And with that, it feels like this room is now empty. It's a polite way of saying moving along. Well, I'm just saying you don't really see anything else of any value in here. I'm just I'm just teasing you. Okay, shall we go somewhere maybe safe that we can rest? Uh, that's a good idea. Oh wait, do we have to tell the um the bar maiden or whatever where we were sleeping on the tables that we murdered the guy? Yeah, but that's once we're out of Danathar's air. We have to go to the um, arena first. Oh, we had to collect our winnings. Uh, no, our companion that we yeah, got that's our winnings for killing. Oh, him. I guess so. Yeah, we also need to talk to Narl if Narl's around. Let's do it, man. Cougar's gonna start back. GTFO. Dumb question oh, before we go. Did we check all the rings on the... Um, we're get all the rings? Yeah, yeah, I think I, we I, I did the list rings. them. Did somebody yeah, get okay, a list? I got them. I, I wrote got them, them tracked. Down. Yeah, we just don't know what they are right now. And then also, maybe Kugra could maybe use some healing. Yeah, he's, a, he's pretty beat up. Okay, I'm going to use it on... I'm going to use my staff. A player to player, if he dies, you can loot him. Oh, no, we already lost one body today. Right. Yay. Thank you, ma'am. I'll do it one more time. Woo -woo. Much better. Okay, we can go now. Sorry, he I don't know how the fuck he ended up in the other room. He's supposed to be there, so give me a second. Not a problem. All right, ready. So as you guys open this door, see Gnarl. Oh, I assume that you have killed Zenthar. Hey. Surprising turn of events, to be quite honest. I had expected that uh, you'd probably die. Weaken him, but die in the process. Congratulations. If you will come with me. Oh, uh, but before we leave, one moment. Um, he seems to pull something out of his pocket. And he lowers his head. You hear him whisper into it. Then you may give me a perception. That you are the closest. Okay. Oh, that was the wrong one. Uh, it does yeah, not matter. <laughs> yeah, and, and your perception's what, like a plus seven? 
E plus eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, actually, plus seven. You're right. Sorry. That was my bad. As uh, he whispers into this thing, you can hear him. Also, it says we're in combat. No, it doesn't. Oh, sorry. My mistake. <laughs> You're only in combat if I stay here in combat. Um, you hear Gnarl whisper. Gnarl's, Gnarl's about to get these hands from Snow by accident. <laughs> Apparently. Um, you hear Gnarl whisper into this stone. And as he speaks, it glows. But Zen, you're the only one that can hear what he's saying. They've succeeded. You may now enter. Charlaxel. The guild is yours. As he stops speaking, the stone stops glowing. And after a moment, we will meet you in the fighting pits, you hear the stone say. <clears throat> says, ah, perfect. We were headed there anyways. Uh, as he, he says that to you guys. Sorry, I just got to drag him out. And I need two more. And what is the other one? Perfect. And along with him, I need... There we go. Now oh, the room is ready. Narl says, please, if you will follow me. I'm just going to drag you guys just because it's easier. Okay. Yeah. You, you guys make your way back up um, through the hallway and towards this door. He pushes it open inside. You can hear um, plenty of, of hollering. Um, does not sound like combat. It sounds like a mix of joy and annoyance. As you guys walk down the stairs behind this door, he, pull, he uh, leads you guys into the arena, the spot you had seen earlier.
as he uh, moves through the crowd, uh, some of the dwarves and humans that are here start shifting, and you see there are a lot of drow in this room now. Over here, over here, Zin, you can see Jarloxel, flanked by um, two other drow. Seem extremely um, geared. They're about them. They, they look like they're probably just as powerful. As Jarloxel. Jarloxel leaving, uh, removes his hat and kind of tips it towards you, Zin. Everybody! The heroes of the hour. Well, Zin, you and I, we had a deal. I thought you would die, but you didn't, and I am a man of my word. I will be setting up a meeting as soon as I can, or at least give you information on where he is. I don't currently have it, but I will get it. In the meantime, I believe that the deal was you may take one of the prisoners from the fighting pits, right? <clears throat> that is what we've been told. Yes. Well, uh, he kind of motions to these three outside of the door the cells let them through they kind of stare at uh uh at you and before they shift out of the way narl also moves aside says when you've made your choice let me know and i'll come get him for you He opens the door for you. You may enter. I will enter. Where is it? Or is it just... Oh, yeah. I will enter the room. Oh, it's open. Are you the only one going in? You guys coming? Uh, yeah, where did you? Oh, oh, that guy's huge. Now, these doors, they are wood um, with iron bands, and there is a small window with iron bars on them. You may look in. The door's not actually open, but I need you to be able okay. to see what's in there. Zinn starts taking a peek through the first door. He'll kind of work his way through. The captain walks in, and he looks. This is not right. You should either free them. Or send them back to where they came from. As you look through each of these, you see a smaller minotaur here. You see an orc uh, in this first cell and a half ogre. All of them look like they've got wounds and scars. In the second door, you see a human. By the look of him, he was probably once a nobleman. You see another that seems like probably um, some sort of sailor, maybe a pirate. 
And in the back, you see a female. Uh, this is of the, the second cell. With brown hair, one white streak. Judging by her ears, she's probably a half-elf. As Zin, you walked by, it looked like she was picking her nails with a dagger. And as soon as she noticed you, she kind of hid the dagger. Almost perfectly. Barely even saw the flash. She's probably fast. In here seems to be a regular drow. Nothing special about him. In here you look, see a man in a turban with a little bit of uh, chair, chin hair. Looks like uh, not long ago it was probably very well taken care of. And in the back, you see a dark-skinned minotaur. Eyes red. And, excuse me, with every exhale, smoke rises from his nostrils. He sits in the back and looks rather injured. But he still looks like he's ready for a fight. You may make your choice. Then I'll make a look and be like, ah, we'll take the big ogre in the first cage. Just kidding. I won't say that. Um, um, I make you very happy. I make you happy, boss. <laughs> you see? Oh, no. uh, Zen will turn to um, the captain. Uh, I don't disagree that this isn't right, but think of it more of this way. We can't free them all unless you want to fight everything that is out there. <clears throat> well, all we can do is save one of them. You know, that large orc the half ogre, two minotaurs. I bet we could stand a chance. I think you grossly underestimate uh, estimate where my kind comes from and how they operate. Hmm. I bet at least half of these at least show more allegiance to them than they do to us. You think so, do you? From where he is, he can see that the Minotaur, the Orc, and the Ogre, the Half-Ogre, half seem happy with this idea. <laughs> you can hear chuckling. This man here in front of you, however, says, well, we might stand a chance, but we would have to have a plan. I'm all for it. I, I would love to get out of here. Can I insight check him? Sure. Uh, I'll use Lucky Coin as well. 16. He seems genuine. Does Thoros do anything? Oh, thank you. Thoros in the back, the dark minotaur, the red eyes, says, uh, I'd be happy to fight, either here or somewhere else. Zen will insight check this person as well. Um, 
Boros. Nah, he's serious. He'll fight either way. Uh, and then Zin will move over the the cage with the drow, and and yourself. Dead if I do. Dead if I don't. But it sounds like you had a deal. Yes. I did. And uh you you look like us, and yet your skin touch lighter than our kind. You are aware of how we operate, are you not half breed? Oh yes, very much so. I'm with you if you release me. However, if you don't, I'm with that as well. I will die down here, one way or another. Though I prefer it not be today. Zen nods. He's not even insight check this guy. He believes that. And then he'll move over. And these three. And uh, this one here says, "I, I don't want to die down here. I, I'm, no, I'm no good at fighting. I." I handle guild charters. I collect debts. I'm not even the one who collects them. I just mark them down. I'm an accountant, for goodness sake. There's one behind you. Behind him says... <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I can't do a female voice right now. Oh. You're fine. This, this deer. So weak. It wasn't so pretty. I'd cut his throat now just for fun. She gives a sly smile as she produces a dagger and kind of, like, uses the side of it to lift his chin. But I do prefer a stronger man. These nobles are... Well, they just bleed too much. And the small dagger just suddenly glances across his chin. And you see it start to pour blood. Uh, ow! Ow! <laughs> he starts to cry. The one in the back kind of laughs. And they call us bitches. <laughs> we are with you, I guess. Um, but before I solidify that, the other one comes forward as well. They have some questions. She asks in rapid succession. How many are there? How many have magic? Um, is there magic items? Is there payment? At least 30. Probably more that we can't see. Uh, most of which should have magic. They are drow after all. And payment? Whatever's on their bodies. We don't know where they hit our gear. Have you found that, perhaps? We also have not found that. Well, we will be useless without our gear. So then turns back to the captain. So, two of which, or four of which have no gear, would be useless without it. One has never fought a day in their life. One is indifferent, and the other one's ready to jump and slice the throat of the other one that isn't has never fought themselves. Are you very confident in this band of fools? Fools, says this one here. Best watch your tongue. If I get out of here, I may have to remove it. She again gives a sly smile. Considering this one's um looks or uh She's very charismatic. You feel that 
If this one's not a captain of a ship, she easily could be soon if she was not in here. Zin shrugs. He's like, I'm not the one behind bars trying to impress somebody to get out of them. So if you're not interested, I'll move on. And he'll just start walking back over this way. Skipping past Doris. the drow. Doris spells. Break me out. I will serve you well. Zin will uh, turn to Thoros. Is that correct? Thoros. Yeah. He will. Uh, he will look at him. If I free you, you do not serve. You become equal to the rest of us. I'm not a slave. I'm not in the business of of slave owning. Fair enough. And Forget I need someone that. I can trust. That would come with time. An honest answer. I appreciate that. Uh, Zen will look to Kugra and um, Ray. Out of what's here, the only one I feel that I might have some trust with is this one. He's at least honest with his words and straightforward with intent. You all can give me a perception. Who all? Uh, Kugra. Then Ray. With uh with my lucky coin. So fifteen. Ray and Zen. You guys hear a click. The door swings open to this cell. And you hear, you, you shouldn't do that. They'll kill us all. And out steps. These two. So, about needing your help to escape. <laughs> Zin swings his bow on the her right away. Not another step. She smiles. They both step back inside. Just proving my point as she shuts the door. However, you don't hear it lock. Point may be proven, but you're just proving mine even more. Narl comes up to the door. Been in here quite some time. Have you made your selection yet? Yes. Yes, we have. I believe I'd like to take, uh, or we would like to take Thoros. Is there any opposed? That's nope. to you guys. Nope. The nods. Then Thoros shall be our new companion. And I'll start to walking out. Or at least out of his way. Naro gets to hear. See him cast a spell. Uh, Zin, you can't see it, but Cougar can. Yep. Oh, like you can see him casting, but you can't see what happens. Um, Cougar notices that this one here becomes completely stiff. Mmm! Mmm! Sorry, I just need to make sure he's not going to try to escape. He unlocks the door and opens it. Thoros. I am. You may leave. Gather your belongings at the far side of the area. Jarlaxle is there now. He has your belongings in a chest. Then we will go. 
Then we'll move out of the room and stand just off to the side. He unlocks, or sorry, he relocks the door. He begins to follow you out. Oops. He is, he suddenly became. Damn, he got fat. <laughs> he starts to follow you out. Ah, I see you have made your choice. What a large one he is. Very scary looking. Is uh, Narl right beside me? Uh, Narl is just inside the door. Oh, he's not actually outside the door yet? Okay, no, there's no, no room for him yet. Uh, the city watch guard. Or, er, sorry, city watch captain. Steps down. You see him eyeing um, Jarl Axel. But he keeps his mouth shut and he looks back to the group. Well, you should probably get your things and let's be on our way. Zin nods and he'll usher the rest of the group forward. He's waiting for uh, Narl to exit the, the door. Well, he can't because you're all in the way, so y'all got to move. Yeah, that's why I'm ushering the rest of them forward so they can uh, move. Once uh, Narl gets out of the door and closes it, Zin will whisper that uh, the three in the second cell have unlocked the door and have the ability to do so again. Narl says, he's already shut this door as you say that, and... I'm I'm sorry, what? At that moment The door burst back open, sending Narl and this one falling into the ring. Out walks this large one. Little man, no free me. Rude. He walks down towards Narl, shoving this, uh, this human away as well. And out behind him walk several more. The orc turns to look at you. Should have freed us. The ogre steps into the middle. You new leader here? As he looks at Charl Axel. Oh, uh, why yes, yes I am. And what are you doing out of your cells? I believe you should turn around. We offer challenge. Challenge me? No, 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 no. We not dumb. You take over guild, we die, we fight you. And who is it you challenge? Well, they could have freed us. They chose not to. We beat them? We go free. They die. Hmm. Garloxa looks at you, Zen. Well. I think that's a good idea. To your corners, everybody. The crowd starts to cheer. They begin to move forward and turn towards you. Well, a challenge has been offered.
they're going to carry on whether I say not to or not. So, what say you, Zin and company? Very well, Jarlaxle. But I will come to collect and count this as a favor whether you like it or not. Very well. Please take positions, everybody. Uh, and with that, we are going to take a five minute break uh, while I get this combat Can ready. Can we make? I... Okay, yeah, that's fine. So we'll take five minute break and then we will be back. Oh my god, my mic is muted. Okay. First day? Okay, listen here. You do it all the time, too. Don't give me that shit. I've never seen her do it. You, you're, not on, you're not on TikTok very, <laughs> or on Twitch very often, sir. Touche. Yeah. Are you even a streamer if you haven't done it? Exactly. <clears throat> Um, so, Jarlaxle says, uh, you, Minotaur, I see you have no equipment. I believe we have it. You may come and get it. I'd love to. Uh, it's down here, my boy. Oh, that's where I went. I wonder if I can see it. So you are aware, Thoros. <clears throat> Currently, they have had your items long enough. You are not attuned to them. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Anything you are not attuned, or anything that is requires attunement, uncheck it until this fight is over, please. Got it. You we'll will be right able now. to attune to it on your next uh, long rest. So question, my halberd is something to which I'm attuned. Can I use it without the magic benefits? Uh, yes, you can still use It's a plus one, isn't it? Uh, it's the uh, halberd for dummies. Uh, let me see. I mean, you're still going to be able to use it as a regular weapon, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure I should. Halberd. I just can use its abilities. Halberd for dummies. Is that actually what the weapon's called? Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, I love it. Legit. Okay, so it's just a regular halberd. Cool. Yep. Without without the attunement, it is a regular halberd. So you can still use it. You're just not gonna be able to use the ability. Got it. So, Val, you've got control of Thoros and Kugra. Zin, you uh, have you and uh, the captain. Yep. So they wait for you all to put on your gear. 
And Charles Oxen says, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have the first show with us in charge. Let's make it a good one, shall we? Everybody, you may place your bets. If any of the drow around. They are our official bookies now. Yeah, all the, the crowd kind of looks at each other and like cheers, but it dies down as they realize that their own are not going to be allowed to collect bets. Just winnings or losses. But you see a bunch of them uh, start heading to the drows and they start making bets. And as the crowd gets ready, begins to cheer. Well... Let's get this started. And hey, Savage? Yep. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I clicked on Cougar, but it doesn't seem to have rolled in as initiative. Sorry. Uh, that's because you did not have Cougar clicked. You had Thoros clicked the whole time. Your initiative. Uh, yeah. My bad. So I will fix... Thoros and add him. Sorry, buddy. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, did my shit really just bug on me? Suddenly the lights go out and I make a dash for it. Ugra has died. Right. Oh, great. I hit a fucking hockey and now my shit's all fucked. Don't do that. First day. Oh, my God. I swear huh? to God, I will kill you all. <laughs> <laughs> the running joke for the rest of the, the right. day. Oh yeah, shit is We're so fucked right shivers. now. Savage has corrupted us. Whoa, what is happening? Oh my god, I gotta refresh and open all those stat blocks again. Be right back 30 seconds. Can I grab a drink? Yeah, you got time.
<clears throat> okay, I think we're finally good to go again. What a clusterfuck. We, we... No. Okay. Not quite. Like, 30 I... more seconds. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and Cougar, we gotta pull him back in, right? There's two there in the Tauros. One. Okay, holy fuck. We are finally ready for this combat. Um, the others have also grabbed their gear as well. What little they had. Okay. Oh, cool. I just realized the bard doesn't have any spells in the fucking list. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, wait. Did you say bard? Shit. Shut up. She pulled out a harp, okay? Like, I, I don't... I don't know I, what I, I was going <laughs> to ask what I was going to ask what weapons they had anyway cuz we would have seen it. So, that's fair. That's a pretty big giveaway. All right. So, this one down here seems to have a harp. And uh ch -ch -ch -ch. sort short at the hip and a short bow strung across her back. This will teach me to improv a fucking encounter for sure. Okay. Uh, the Minotaur has a great axe. The Half Ogre. As a battle axe and a javelin strapped across his back. Sorry, a a long quiver of five javelins on his back. The Orog looks an awful lot like an orc. 
has a great axe and also five javelins crossed uh, in a holster on his back. <clears throat> uh, this one has a dagger and a rapier. And that looks to be it. So, as Jar Laxle calls for a f to fight, Swashbuckler, I mean the pirate looking one, charges forward with the rapier. One, two, three. I never did like your kind. Opportunity attack. Uh, I mean, that's fine. You may, but it is already within range of the guard, so you make your attack. Oh, good. That is a hit. And it's got the plus one in there. No, it doesn't. I take that back. It's got the plus three rather than plus one. Never mind. That's right. I'll shut up now. As this one charges in, you bring your um, your halberd down across. Uh, she almost is able to dodge it, but you catch her in the side, and you see that her um, shirt has now got a line of blood on it. But as she charges in, trying to dodge your attack, she comes in and makes her... Attacks. I just realized that uh, these are all set to roll to you guys. So let's change that. And she makes her attacks. Wow, really? Uh, she manages to... Uh... Being caught off guard with your halberd attack, uh, her rapier comes in and um, glances off of his armor. Um, however, thinking he's got the upper hand, Swashbuckler then swings around to the side with a dagger and sticks him in the side. Uh, the City Watch Captain. Yeah, he'll uh he'll do his multi attack. I forgot you're controlling. I removed the health already, but it's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Uh it's two rapiers and a dagger. One sixteen, eighteen, and then a dagger. Not so good. Miss hit miss. I'm going to stick you. As he makes his first swing, uh, she kind of parries it. Uh, but then he makes a quick swing around and comes up underneath, um, catching her on the other side, slashing into her ribs. Healing seven. However, seeing the, the dagger in his other hand, she kind of shifts away, and uh, he misses with the dagger. Is that it? Yeah, he's not going to move. Ray. Okay, I'm going to do to uh, spike growth. Sure. All right, I'll draw it for me, and I will put it down. Okay, you may, uh, there you go. Uh, 
tender on a point within it. Area becomes difficult. Train for the duration. A creature moves into or within the area. It takes. All right, so nothing until they move. Got it. Bonus action. Movement. And then I'll just cast a lele, and that's it. Okay. As you lay, uh, as from in between these boards, suddenly sprout vines full of thorns. Uh, they come up to about like uh, for a regular humanoid, about halfway up the calf. And you, you can see these uh, these ones back here are, are confused by this. They seem to shout out. Be careful. These are sharp. Sin. Yeah. Um. Let's see. How hurt is this one looking now? Not very. Okay. Bleeding from a couple spots, but it's not bad. Mm, but we now we have spiked with. We have got some melees. Um. Do I have clear sight of her, or is she kind of hidden behind? Uh no the the spike growth oh behind the minotaur, yeah. Uh I'm gonna say yeah she probably got partial cover. <clears throat> Let me see. Can I move? Oh. She probably only had a, like a quarter cover. Okay. Yeah, can I move there? Sorry. Sure. All right, I'm going to Hunter's Mark her. All right. <laughs> Damn. Uh, and I'll shoot twice. Yeah, those are definitely both hits. Oh, forgot to add Hunter's Mark on that one. That's right, a good one. 16. And then 15. 16 fit 31. And that is me. Okay. Um, two arrows slam into her and she nearly drops her harp. Ah! She cries out as uh you put an arrow into her uh through her one thigh. And another one uh, through a, a shoulder. The Orog. Uh, let's see that spell. Exception. What's your spell save, DC? Uh, Ray? Oh, me? Yep. Uh, it's 18. Right. All right. Yeah, uh, I'll save DCs only for seeing it or if they notice it. Well, he, he got advantage. Well, it's, it, I mean, they can notice it, but it's to recognize whether it is hazardous. So he had advantage, but oh, yeah, yeah. he did not uh, succeed. So he moved two gotcha. spots. Uh, which takes 20 feet and 44, please, Ray. Ten. Oh, he cries out. And with his perception, he would have seen that you were the one that cast it. Ray... Um, I'm behind somebody. He may not have seen me. I might have partial cover. He he rolled his perception. He saw it. Definitely saw you cast it. But you are also going to have boosted AC versus his attack. I'm going to say you are in half cover, which gives you an extra two AC against his attack. So what is your AC now? 18. Okay. He pulls out uh, two javelins. Wow. Wow. Um, 24 and 23 to hit. 
which obviously hit. So you take 15 piercing total. And I need you to roll two concentration checks, please. So con saves. You hold concentration. But you do take the 15 damage. Um, Thoros. I was going to rage the bonus action and attack the rogue to the northeast first. Okay. Oh, this man can rage. What are you? First one hits. Got it. Thoros, uh, trying not to get any closer to these thorns, uh, stays at a distance, but manages to get off two swings. Uh, the first one, although it hits, uh, it doesn't do too, too much damage. Um, she is looking a little injured. She's bleeding from a few spots. Uh, the second one, however, she managed to get her dagger in the way and kind of just um, direct the hit away from her, making a miss. Got it. That's Thoros. Kugra. Kugra is going to move around. Hang on a sec. And attack the rogue type. Uh-huh. Damn. Uh, first one hits. And I have to check one thing. I want to check the language on um, Sanctuary. Because I'm trying to figure out whether or not the AOE thorns would break the Sanctuary. Okay, so it doesn't. Or it deals damage to another creature. So would damage caused by the thorns be considered dealing damage after the Sanctuary? Um, did you re-up your Sanctuary? No, no, I'm about to. It's a bonus action. Okay. So Kruger's picking his two attacks. He's got a bonus action left. I'm trying to decide whether or not to use it on Ray. Um, to the spell ends, any creature targets the warded creature with an attack or harm for spell. You must, yeah, spells from area effects, such as spells and fireball. Warded creature makes you attack. Cast a spell that affects Cast a spell that affects any enemy creature or deals damage to another creature. I would say that, yes, the thorns uh, doing any damage would cause Sanctuary to drop. Okay, that's fair. In that case, he is done for the turn. Minotaur. He's going to start moving as well. <clears throat> Five. And. Are you using your reaction? Yeah. Oof. That is a miss. Uh, Ray, you may give me 4d4. This creature seems to get out of uh, the thing, just barreling through these vines. He does take the damage. And he closes in on Zinn. Oh, sorry, that is the wrong one. Uh, that was a 19, though. All right. Uh, 19's a miss. Uh, no, probably not once I add on his modifier. 19 plus 6 is 25. 25 hit. All right, one second. My, uh, oh, that's why. Got it. Okay, so 25. Yes, 25 does hit. 
Zin, as he charges in, you take 15 slashing damage <clears throat> from the first one, so I need a const concentration save. That is a su success. Uh, he then hits you a second time for 17 slashing. That's he a miss. No, no. Oh, wait. How, what, was, what was the number on this? They, they were both 25. Oh, he get 1919. Yeah. Okay. So 17 slashing damage and another constitution save, please. That is a success. You still have your Huntress Mark. So he hits you twice um, with this great axe. Um, hit, digging deep down to the bone on uh, one of your thighs and on an arm. He laughs. Should have freed us, little trow. Half ogre. Yeah, he doesn't even notice. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30. Oh, Half Ogre still only has a five foot reach, huh? He's going to take out his, uh, one of his javelins. And he's going to huck it at you. Uh, Thoros. Cool. Weird Minotaur. They choose you, not me. Me stronger. Uh, he, he hauls back. And although the speed and strength at which this is thrown is so quick, how he had to wind up seemed extremely slow. And you just kind of step to the side before he even threw and it sails right past you. It slams into this, um, this on, or sorry, no, it would slam into this onlooker here. And he immediately drops. The bard is going to cast. Oh. Look at that. Does the ogre take damage from moving through the spikes? Uh, yes, sorry. Uh, you can roll... Uh, 64. He's obviously bleeding, but it doesn't, uh, he doesn't seem to notice. All right, the bard is going to cast Shatter. Sorry, Savage, I assume this guy isn't here, right? Like, because they're not going to be in the field? Correct. My bad. Okay. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure I wasn't, like, blocked on that side as well. Um, as she casts Shatter, it is a 10-foot radius. Sorry, let me, I just accidentally closed it. Because the, the names, that the spells that this creature can cast is in its stat block, but it's not in as a spell. So. <laughs> Ow. So I got to look up the spell. I know what Shatter does, but I got to see the range and shit. So... 10 foot radius.
So he he's uh not too worried about uh, the other combatants um, on his side. So Kugra and Zin, you both will have advantage against this saving throw. Kugra and who? Zin. Okay. Uh, the City Watch Captain, Thoros, and Ray do not. You can all roll concentrations or er, constitution saves, please. Uh, City Watch Captain as well. Wow. Um, what was it? Sorry, what was the save? Is it uh, Constitution? Did, save? did I save or not? Yeah, no, but did I save or did I not? I saw the damage. Uh, yes, you did actually. Okay. But I still need the city watch. Um, save. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And he just has normal on this one. Bro, I literally could not have 14. rolled any worse, almost. Like, that is horrendous. One more one. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Holy fuck. I was like, all right, I'm going to knock Cougar out so that he's gone. And you guys are just, you know, the people that are supposed to be there. But okay, maybe not. All right. Um. Wow. That was. Okay, so. <coughs> Zin and Thoros. Sorry, Cougar. I mean, Zin and Cougar take half of that, so. Two! You guys take two damage. Everybody else takes four. Oh my god. Oh, I gotta do the swash buffer. And this is magic damage, right? Don't question I know. It is. Okay, cool. It is uh, thunder damage, I think. You. Yeah, it's thunder. Very, very frightening. Ooh, Galileo. <laughs> I love that song. I just can't do it justice. This one looks back at the bard. Watch what you're doing with your spells. She then turns on Thoros. Cute. Um, or sorry, not Thoros, Kugra. She's not even near Thoros. Uh, let's see. Kugra's got an AC of 20, so. Yeah, rapier. One of the rapier attack and one dagger hit. Um, eight piercing, or sorry, eight piercing and seven piercing. So 15 total. She's then going to use the disengage bonus action. Sorry, she did that on Thoros, not on on Kugra. Just to watch. Kugra. Oh, uh, she. Oh, Kugra. Yep. Yep. Da da da. All right. She's then going to out. And Ray, you can give me two d four, please. She's looking very injured, but she uses her bonus action to disengage and uh, stand on the first step or the first seats, waiting for somebody to come towards her. City Watch. Yeah, he's just going to whip out his crossbow and shoot her. All right. This is a public place. (laughs) 
Um, it misses and it sinks into a seat behind this. Uh, this drought kind of like sees it coming and kind of s steps out of the way and it slams into the seat. Um, bonus action reload the crossbow. Okay, he's gonna move back. Uh, he's gonna move right here. Okay. Ray. Oh, hi. It's my turn. I'm going to uh, healing word on uh, little old Zinn. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I rolled it, but I didn't uh, mention it. So, Zin, you can also give me a perception real quick. So I didn't have advantage. Uh, you saw a few of her wounds start to close up. She's still not looking great, but... Sorry, I, I added the HP and rolled it, but I forgot to actually, like, mention it to you. Yep. Right, you may continue. Okay, then I think... Maybe... I end my turn, maybe. Maybe? Well, okay, I'm going to move over here just so I'm like, I'm just going to like hide behind the boys <laughs> so I can get hit maybe less. And uh, I think that's it. Okay. Zen. Yep. Um, I'm going to, if I move here, I don't get an opportunity to, correct? Correct. Um, but it will still be a disadvantage because you have somebody within five feet of you. Yeah. So then I'll step out here and, and, and invoke opportunity attack. Okay. Your AC is what you said, 20? Yep. Uh, as you try, as you go to move around this creature, he swings down and his axe just misses your heel and buries into the ground. He reefs it back out. And as you spin, right. and I assume take your shot. My shots. Take what we're going to try to put as much in there as possible. Hit. Uh, Hunter's Mark is on still. I assume she's still up. She is. And again. Hit. Describe. Yes. Um, Zin is like kind of bobbing and weaving after getting hit a couple times from this uh, Minotaur, and he sl sneaks up beside it, pops two quick shots straight in her chest as she kind of falls back into the, the thorny bushes that they're stuck in right now. She hits the ground. Um, doesn't even get a scream out. Okay, and then I'm gonna move an extra 15 feet to here. And that's my turn. Okay. Oh, actually, bonus action, I'm gonna move it to this guy. Hunter's Mark, sorry. Alright. This one, knowing now that uh, it does hurt to walk through these, he is going to try to jump. 16. Okay, so... 
he is going to get to here. He still takes a little damage. 2d4, please. Does he stumble as he lands? No, not with the, yeah, that athletics. Five. You're going to drop, dwarf. And he makes... What is Cougar's AC? 20. Uh, Cougar is able to parry the first one and then blocks the second one. Excellent. <laughs> Thoros. Never enough attacks in the day. Thoros is going to attack the Minotaur. Three okay. times. Uh, all hit. So Minotaur turns towards Zen. Thoros turns his halberd on the Minotaur. Uh, three rapid strikes. So that's 13, 14, 15, 22, 24, and uh, 31. 31. You... So many maths. You, die, you uh, drive your halberd deep, slashing several times across his back. Basically make a six-pointed star. Nice. That's Thoros. Cries out, and he turns towards you. Kugra. Kugra will attack the gray thing down here. And he doesn't have advantage. Yes. As uh, Kugra recovers from blocking uh, this creature's attacks, uh, he then makes attacks of his own, and this creature also blocks him with his sword. And Kugra's going to cast Sanctuary on himself. Okay. And what does that do again? So basically, here, I'll post it. A creature with an attack or harm or spell must wake wisdom saving throw. And I assume your DC is not actually 11, right? Spell save DC 13. Okay. Minotaur turns and charges at Thoros. Ten feet. Not charge ten feet that but it does get 13 and 20 20 hits holy shit uh as he brings his sword down it goes straight across <coughs> sorry diagonal from your uh from like your collarbone collarbone straight down to the uh other side 28 slashing Okay. Half ogre. See Zen. Seeing uh, the Minotaur. Are you raging, Thoros? I was going to say, say, he's a raging bull. <laughs> That's so funny. 
Um, he's a raging bull. My bad. Has I, a halberd yeah. come east. <laughs> my bad. I, I didn't think <laughs> you can fly. I didn't think you've been raging, but all right. Um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. And he's gonna get to here. Um, Ray, maybe. Yeah. Does a sixteen hit? Uh. He was here, right? Yeah. Okay, so he gets 20 feet. So, yes, it does. And, Ray, you can also roll me 4d4. And you have, uh, you have Sentinel, right, Thoros? Yep, so he stops. Yeah, so he gets to here. Uh, oh, my God, that's awesome. Let's see, two, and that is nine, and eleven. Damn. Yeah, uh... As he gets to here, and Thoros hits him, and he takes the damage from the spikes. Ray, you technically got the last hit. You want to describe it? As he tumbles Sorry, forward? which guy is it? This ogre guy? He just, like, falls like a tree. Like, he thinks he's fine, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just drops like a tree is being chopped in the woods. Because he's stupid. And as he falls, he lands at Zinn's feet. Just, uh, just uh, a hair's width away. Land slamming into the ground in front of you, Zen. I feel like there's a type of hair you're about to describe. <laughs> <laughs> Twas a cunt hair. All right, Bart is dead. Boys. That one is dead. He swashbuckler. Going to rush back in five ten towards Kugra. Okay, that's a crit hit, a crit miss, and then wisdom. a hit. All wisdom. right, wisdom. Succeeds. Oof. Okay. Just barely. Good enough. The first hit is 19. Cougar's down. Uh, which means he would have advantage on the one that missed. So we'll roll that one again. Uh... That is a 16. That is a miss still. Where she bends down and slams her dagger in. Let's see if she gets a crit. She does not, but it's still a hit. Uh, Kugra has obviously one failed death save. Got it. City Watch Captain. Yeah, he'll move over here and he'll start attacking this guy. Sure. Will he, though? Wow. I mean, he'll try. Wow. I think the 18 hits. Yeah, just down. barely hits. Moves <laughs> in with his rapier and um, slices twice. Uh, the orc kind of dodges one, blocks the second. And then as they're locked in a uh, a sword battle together, he slips his hand around the side and gets him with the dagger. He is still up, but he's not looking great. Uh, that'll be it for him. Ray. Okay, I'm going to move over here.
And I am going to use I'm going to use Healing Word on Kugra. Okay. Love that for him. And then I'm going to Shalele this lady. Uh-huh. That's a hit. Okay, still standing, but not looking good. And that's it. Zen. Yep. Zen is going to step over here. Okay. Uh, uh, bonus action to move Hunter's Mark to this one. And then fire at her. Yep. Describe. Uh, yeah, well, she's like, while well, Ray hits her in the head and she starts to f stumble back a little bit, Zin pops one through the side of her, her face uh, and she drops. Um, and then he'll fire one more at this guy. No Hunter's Mark, obviously. <laughs> yep. Bro, you are rolling fire today. I don't think you fucking rolled one that was like under twelve know, on the dice pretty, roll. I'm pretty good. Don't jinx it, sir. Are you okay? kidding? That's my job. I'm I'm a jinx it. Because <laughs> uh, once it starts being shit, it's shit real bad. Um, and that'll be everything. All right, as this one's locked in in battle with this one here, it takes an arrow in the side. The Orog. As he's locked in the, the um, struggle for control of his sword against uh, City Watch Captain, he kind of pushes him off. First one is at the Captain. Second one is at Kugra. Uh, they should not be an advantage. Uh, neither one of them hit. Cool. Thoros. Who's looking worse, the Minotaur or the Orog? The. Give me, uh, give me a medicine. Thirteen. You're not really sure. They both have pretty uh, egregious wounds, but they both seem like they're roughly the same distance from dying in terms of uh, how much they can withstand. Got it. I'll try and finish the Minotaur then. Hit, miss, hit. All right, so we've got seven, nine, seventeen. You make your three attacks. Um, first one slashes him uh, across the shin. You bring it back across. He parries it. Um, and as you use the momentum, your sword goes over him. And then you quickly cut back across the center. Um, diving your halberd. Wait a minute. You ha do hawks get disadvantage up close or no? I've never seen anything about it, but we can look. Give me a second. Let me just check. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't see anything on the actual halberd items that says that. 
Well, it's probably not where it would be, but I'm not going to take five minutes to go through the DMG to find yeah. it. So It's pretty cool. The weapon looks pretty dope. I've never actually seen an Albert in D&D. So we'll say for now at least uh, no until I can actually look to be sure. But yeah, you uh, yeah. you deal two out of your three attacks get damage. That's me. Kugra. Kugra is going to attack the... Uh, watch me, who's it? I assume you taking half his movement to stand up first? Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Oh, shit. Sorry, that's the GM. That's Doesn't the matter. They it's both hit. We'll see them one after the other. Hit me with your best shot. Oh, he fucking did. And the second one, I got to turn off Divine Smite. I don't know if it'll carry over. So, before you actually roll your second one. Yeah, I did. I uh, you, you kill him with the first one. Would you like to use that, uh, the Smite for the second one? Well, if he's already dead, no. All right, so you want to use that against, uh, what, the Minotaur then? I think you can get there, right? You got 15 or 25 movement. Uncheck the rest base movement. Base movements. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. Let me check the right character. Cougar's base is 30, so yeah. Okay, yeah, you can get there. And I mean, we're just gonna take that that crit roll. Okay. Uh, so that is nine. Or sorry, no, that is. Wait, I'm confused. Okay, so your first attack. Did you smite on the first one as well? I did. Okay. Yeah, that would have killed him. Are you smiting with us with your crit? Let me see if I have enough smites. Nope. I only have one smite, so I'm gonna smite on the crit. Shame. He is still standing, but barely. Okay. That's Kugra. It's the Minotaur's turn. As you come in out of nowhere and deal a nearly fatal blow, um, you can see that where you chop him in the thigh, you definitely hit an artery as it starts to spurt. He then turns on Kugra. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm never getting rid of Kugra, apparently. <laughs> Legends never die. You just have to give him a nice send-off. Kugra looks for traps from now on at the front of the group. <laughs> right. There you go. Or maybe he has a different goal. Um, you know? He could be the first character that leaves the group not out of death. You know, it'd be wild and totally different. It would be, it but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure when he joined you guys, he said he was with you until the end. Or was it until you he guys get out of here? I can't remember. I, well he he I think he might have he could have meant it in context of the end of Xanathar. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Um right. yeah, so he makes two chops at Kugra and fails. City watch captain. Or maybe Jarlaxle whispers to him that there's a, a loved one that's still alive that thinks he's dead and he must go. We won't worry about that after. Sorry. All great. Uh, City Watch Captain. He'll um he'll kinda come through. He'll probably have to take a little bit of damage to do this, I assume, right? I mean, there's nobody left in there and Ray can drop concentration if she wants to.
so the as the guard goes to walk through, say, "Hey, can you uh, can you clear this up for me?" Ask me really nice. Yes, I'll do it. <laughs> God. All right, so he'll sneak over and then to sorry to here, and then he'll start stabbing. Wow! Wow! <laughs> No, Compared they all <laughs> miss. <laughs> He's useless. We, we need to get this guy out of here. Wow. <laughs> this is where all my bad rolls are going, Savage. Keep Apparently. Him off my character. He moves in, and um, uh, apparently he is just... He's not used to this many fights in a day, and he's just flubbering it. Ray... Okay, so we're going to start by moving. And I'll shillelagh him. Sure. Do you have advantage? Oh, I didn't mean to. That's a miss. Great, great, great. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that was fun. Zen. Yeah, move over here. Hunter's mark over to this guy, and then I'm just going to shoot at him, and hopefully he isn't a problem anymore. All right, let's see your 20-plus roll. Oh, look at that. First one's a 20-plus. What a shocker. <laughs> um... Uh, did 17 hit him as well or no? Yeah. Describe it as he starts to go down before your second arrow even hits. Oh, yeah. So, like, I pop him one in the back of the head, and then as he starts to fall forward, the last one goes into his ass cheek. And he hits the ground. And with that, we are out of combat. The crowd goes wild as the last enemy drops to the ground. Jar start shooting the Minotaur. Sorry, go ahead. Jarloxel says, well, we have our winner, ladies and gentlemen. So, you all may go, except for you. And he points at the city guard captain. Immediately, drow start to come towards the center. Zing goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is the meaning of this? As he's kind of like put his hands like for them to stay. Well, I do believe I had told you that you can have one captive. That one there's a captive. You chose Thoros. I was one captain from the arena. He's not from the arena. He's still a captive. Uh, Zen will be like, I, I do recall saying you would owe me a favor afterwards, whether you liked it or not. He smiles. He smirks at him. He smiles back. Is this how you choose to call in your favor? Give me an insight. With my lucky coin. Oh, this was obviously his plan as soon as you said favor. Zin will uh, look over at the captain. Is the captain sweating at all at this point? He looks like he's about ready to fucking keel over. But he hoists up his fucking weapons, um, ready to fight his way out if he has to. He looks at the captain. It seems you will be the one to owe me a favor now. And he winks. He looks at uh, between Charlaxel and you. And he's still tense, but he lets go of his fighting stance. He puts his weapons away. Sorry, uh, he's not going to put his weapons away, he says. So. 
I'm able to go free then. Looking at Jarloxel. If this is how Zinn wishes to use his favor, very well. Hmm. He looks uh, at you and say... he kind of nods his thanks and he slides his uh, weapons back into the sheaths. Uh, Zinn nods back. He's like, don't worry, I'll collect my favor later. Uh, and then he'll like, kind of like, like uh, happily kind of walk away. He's very happy with himself at this point. As you head out, um, he does say, oh, um, by the way, if you want an easier way out, he says, uh, he, he gives you directions. He says to go back through this door, um, go south to the other door, go across. Uh, he says where you met Gnarl in that room, go to the west and then north, and it's the first door on the right. It'll get you out of here a little easier than having to go all the way back through the uh, the layers. Zinn nods and gives his thanks. I will be in contact with information about Dredst before long. Yes, I'll be I'll be waiting. I do keep my word, he says, as he removes his hat and gives a uh, like a flourished bow. So, you guys are able to make it. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? I can I hear, can you. hear you. You said loot the bodies, right? I mean, they've got nothing on it but mundane shit. Oh, okay, never mind. GTFO, GTFO. Sounds like a great plan. Um, oh, wait, me... wait, 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 wait. Before we go, can I use my last two char uh, two charges? Maybe I'll just use one of my Aura Vitality. I mean, if you want to do that here, you may. Well, can well, we do it as we walk, if we're just walking out? Uh, as long as everybody stays close to her, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that as long as there's close. no issues. Wait a moment. I think I gave you the wrong instructions. Somewhere to go. I just figured you'd pull us to where you want us to be at the end since it was, you know, they have control. It's all safe now. Yeah. Um, fuck it. Let's see. I take it you guys are going to uh, just head back to the city, or do you guys want to go all the way up to, um, to the city, like the, not Skullport, but the actual, what you call it, city? Waterdeep? Yeah. Um, I think... I'd like to go to Waterdeep, if that's okay with Yeah, everybody. that's what I was going to say. I think Waterdeep is good. I'm okay with that. Very well. Also, player to DM, I feel like it would make it make it easier for when the the other people show up. Deed. Let me see. I gotta find the handout for. So the quickest way out you guys have learned is from the. Ah. Oh. The Archmage, which is twenty five gold is your call. I believe it was fifty. Oh, fifty. Okay. I'm just trying to find where it is. I know it's in the high thirties. Taz at the Poison Quill. Oh, this is perfect.
at 27. 27. Um, 20 of that heal will get me up, if that's okay with everybody else. Yeah, man. Where is 27? You okay with putting 50 on Cobra? Yeah, you take what you need. I'm I'm good. You guys just take whatever you need and then I'll have whatever's left over. I'll bring them both up a bit, but you still need some too. Yeah, but if we're going for a rest, I'm good. Like, I'm good for a bit. Just Kubra was, like, on his deathbed. And I know Zinn was also. Yep. Zinn, can you drag out the City Watch Captain? Um, where yeah, you guys are I up here? We'll do that. Yeah. And, uh, Thoros, you can drag yourself out here as well, please. Near the top of the map. Yep, just getting rid of Al. Aw, sad. And a hoodie. God damn, your character's ripped. Roids. Is that like a 14 pack? Is that like, is that a possibility? Right. Artificial intelligence, that and six fingers. God damn. I apparently have two stat blocks for him. Do the same. For who? Oh, you'll find out in a moment. Okay. I'm on a different layer from everyone else, I think. You should be on the I north. No, like, I can see me and everybody else. But it doesn't line up with what's on Ray's screen. Uh, that is because you need to go to the top of the map. Oh, you guys are not down there. Out. Understood. I've heard... We're all in the same layer. Yeah, so don't, don't delete those lower ones. We'll keep them there, just because... Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, lot easier totally when you guys transfer levels, right? Then instead of having to move everybody to a different level, you guys are there, and we just got to move you around the around that level. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that means uh, Val's in the wrong spot too. Oh, we're in the upper map. Yep. Yeah, I, th I thought. Yeah, upper. Level. My bad. Sorry, it just looked so perfect when I, I got there and then he moved his character away and I was like, okay, I'm I'm right. And then I was like, what are you talking about? I don't see anything. So did you guys arrive back at um Castle Grins between the uh the trek and your time in the dungeon, it is getting to be late evening. You guys knock on the door of Tass. You've met uh, this particular archmage before. As you knock, she says, yes, what is it? Um, it's that party of adventurers that spoke with you just a, a few days before. We're uh, hoping to head back to, to Waterdeep. Do you, do you have the coin? Yes, we have the coin. Give me a perception. Damn. Um, 
Kukra and Thoros can actually give me the perception as well. Don't fail me now. Is there right in front of the door? Let's go, Thoros. Do you have advantage on uh, Kugra? No, no, I don't. Thoros says, I think I hear another voice. Uh, one moment, Tass says. You hear uh, Kugra here, or sorry, Thoros hears an older man's voice. Well, I guess I'll be going. I shall see you soon, Al. Till next month? Very well. You hear through the door. Oh, by the way, that was quite a display, and everybody outside can hear this. Too bad your friend was turned to dust. <laughs> he chuckles. And as Tass opens the door, you don't get to see the creature or the person who had said that. But instead, you see a swirl of magic as they disappear. Thoros pushes aside his line clock and scratches his balls. Oh my god. <laughs> I thought you said that this is the same group. I don't recognize either of these two or the other one there. Who are all of you? There have been some changes to the roster. But we have the coin. The uh, captain of the City Watch says, uh, whispers to Ray, what, what coin? How much is the passage? As he reaches into a small coin purse at his belt. She whispers, 50 gold. He pulls out, digs through his bag, and he pulls out a fistful. He says, he, he slowly counts it. I have a gold, two silver, and five copper. It's in size. Uh, He's like, I've got the 49 gold. We'll tag it to what you owe me. And he'll hand over 49 gold for him as well. Very well. Come in, come in. Rim, sorry. 50 gold each. Hurry up now. Stand in a circle. She begins to cast... Um, after you all hand over 50 gold. And as she's casting, she says, name the place you wish to be. Uh, what's that tavern called again? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm wrong. I thought it goes to a specific spot. In um... Yeah, it does. <laughs> and it's like close to the tavern, right? Uh, it's an orphanage in the dock ward. Okay. And fucking bippity boppity boo, Alakazam, fuck no you. No place like home. No place like home. No place like home. And nice. you just disappear. All right, an orphanage in the dock ward, huh? All right, where's the dock ward? Definitely be down south somewhere. You know the name of it? No, I don't think it's really going to matter. I'm just trying to figure out what that purple spot is I marked down there. Oh, that's old Zoblob Shop, I think. Serpent Serpentil Books. D10? No, D71. Uh, but that uh, oh. that doesn't matter. You guys pop out at the uh, top of an orphanage. <clears throat> Downstairs, uh, you can hear several, um, plenty of children um, laughing and giggling. 
as you guys descend the stairs. <sighs> More people from Skullport, I see, as a um, woman in gray clothing makes herself known. Very well, on with it. Out, out the door. Out the door. Uh, she tr tries to usher you kind of um, out the door. Uh, you guys can notice uh, that although there's plenty of kids laughing and playing, there seems to be a room of children um, sitting at desks, learning as, uh, however, there's one that seems to be being scolded. There's a, uh, another woman dressed much like this one. She points at the child and waggles her finger. Um, she's, uh, she's a little ways off, so it's hard to say, hear what she's saying, but uh, most of the children in that room are, are very attentive, watching what's happening. Meanwhile, the one she seems to be waggling at her, at her finger is mocking her, waggling the finger back, smiling and bobbing, her he bobbing his head around like he's mocking her. Finally, she yells, that is it, boy, and she grabs a ruler. She strikes the boy's hand. Is anybody doing anything? You guys said no. Yeah, we'll, we'll head out. I don't want to bother her. She's got her hands full with these rascals. Yeah, it's still just discipline. It's not abuse. <laughs> Damn. As you guys go to leave, you hear the child get louder. Please, miss, that. can I have another? And you hear another whack. And another? The boy's voice is not faced at all. Like he's not even feeling this. Even as you step out in the street, you can hear whack, whack, whack. <laughs> as the child laughs. But you guys head back to the yawning portal. As you guys make your way through the town, many people seem to be staring. in and you know what you can all do perceptions Zin and Ray you guys are Everybody is aware of the stairs, but Zin and Ray, you guys hear whispers. Um, the streets are starting to go dark. And even through the light, or the, the, the torch light down the streets, from the shadows, you hear whispers. Is that a Minotaur? What's a door guard doing up here? Um, in the voices, there seems to be a mixture of fear, hate, and interest, curiosity. Given that three out of your four current group are not known to be friendly, you make your ways through the streets. At one point, you guys turn down an alley, and three men step out. However, as soon as they see the Minotaur, his eyes glowing red in the darkness, they take a couple steps back. As you, you all continue on, they turn and run the other direction. 
What is that? What is that? I don't know. Let's get the fuck out of here. Would you guys make it back to the yawning portal? The city guard says, by the way, my name is, fuck, what is the city watch guard's name, or city watch captain, I think he's got a name, um, we're gonna call him, Fran, B-R-A-N-N, -N. uh, last name is gonna be, Muffin? No, we're not doing Muffin as a fucking last name. Get it? Brand Muffin? Oh. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> it is not Brand Muffin. It's, um... Brand Tarwell. T-A-R-W-E-L-L. -L. In fact, let me change that. Uh, to do NSC is now leaving the group. I'm going to remove your ability to see him, Zin. And I am going to move him down into an area for NPCs. Once I figure out where the fuck I'm going to put him. Where am I going to put him? You know what? We'll put him with fr friends and allies. How about that? He says, Well, when you decide you need that favor, you know my name. Thank you for getting me out of there. We, uh, I have a lot to discuss with the City Watch. I must be going. The nods. Be well, and let's hope you don't find yourself in a position like that again. Well, with Bregg and Darth now in control of Skullport, probably better to have the Duergar in control. Wait, the Bregg and Dar are in charge of Skullport now? Uh-huh. They took over the Drugar? Yeah. Uh, Narl did say that when you guys were... Oh, he said Xanathar. Because we're, we're in Xanathar's guild. I didn't know he was talking about the Skull Port. Oh, yeah. Well, Xanathar held control over it. Um, he sh no, I thought the Drugar had control over it. They shared... Yeah, they, Drugar, they, 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 Drugar we, we had control They took control because of us. Was, yeah. Right? They took control that, that because of true. us. That is true. That is true. And However, then we killed Xanathar, so they didn't have anyone to oppose them. That is correct. So then wouldn't it be Bregg and Dierth and the Druagar going to battle then to fight over who's going to take power? That's essentially what would happen. That is correct. However, Bregg and Darth, they are kingmakers. <clears throat> kingmakers, and they have a guild all their own. Zin, you would know enough um, about Bregg and Darth. The Duergar who are left to control have no chance against Bregg and Darth. Gotcha. It will take maybe two days to uproot and kill any Duergar who decide they do not want to serve. Bregg and Darth. Wow, are we the baddies? Well, I mean, no, because not in my opinion. Because we can't control what they do. We had to handle Xanathar regardless because he was tormenting the people, right? True. Yeah. Do you know that age old saying? The path to hell. Yada, yada, yada. What? Path to hell oh, is paved good. with can't good say... intentions.
so we should do an evil game. Mm, yes. Kidding. So, um, he does... He, for those of you who are unaware of what would probably happen next, the City Watch captain is very smart in these matters. He informs you that Greg and Darth will take over Skullport in a matter of a couple days, and there's nothing the City Watch can do about it. But he will head off um, back to uh, the headquarters to make plans and <clears throat> figure out ways to deal with this. But as you all arrive in the Yawning Portal, Dernan uh, pops out as soon as you guys enter. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who are the two of them? And he points at the Durgar and the Minotaur. I am Thoros. This one freed me, and I owe him a debt. And the other one? Uh, hi, my name is Kugra. I'm here with them. They also saved me. I can't do two at the same time. Sorry, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. Um, so was Cougar lying, trying to lie, or did you forget how you came into being with them? I totally forgot. Um, so he refused. Yes, I made him back in town. He refused to um to fight with the Durgar. Um, because he he figured out what they were gonna do to uh, but with you guys. At hand, ran over. And then when the fighting was over, you guys were leaving town, he came to join you. Got it, got it. I met them in Skull Port. They're a good company and good people. I think they'll speak for me. He looks at Zinn. You got yes. control over them? I don't control anyone, but I do vouch for these people. Very well. You've been here long enough. But just know, if you cause any trouble, you'll all be out of here. The entire, the entire tavern has been silent. And as, as you say, understood. It says, all right. Food? Drink? Drink. Yes, that would be very welcome. He looks at the Minotaur and says, Hmm. Hold on a minute. I think I might have a stool big enough. And uh he kinda he goes out um into the back. And he basically pulls out a large barrel and <laughs> sits it down um at the bar here. I think that'll hold you. Don't be sitting on my other stools. Got a feeling you'll break them. And he starts to pour four drinks. Sets them down at the bar. So. I like a good story. What's your, uh, what's your little group been up to? I haven't seen you in uh, a couple days. Well, we decided to take down Xanathar's guild. I'm uh, sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that is the case. The Xanathar. Xanathar's the, guild. The Beholder. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you like to see an eye? <laughs> As he goes to reach for his, his hunt bag of hunter. What you mean? Fuck yes, I'd like to see an eye. <laughs> he'll, he'll pull out the like eye stock of like one of the eye stalks of charm and show him a little bit. As you pull it out, um, it, it kind of flops and almost uh, like kind of looks towards him. He's whoa, whoa, whoa. and he kind of like moves to the side. That's just crazy. 
Uh, where's your winged friend? <clears throat> Excuse me, winged friend. I'm losing my voice pretty good now. Um, Vin gets a little more somber. He's he's like, um, I uh, I happen to have him right here, and he lightly taps his pouch beside him. Uh, we did not come out unscathed. I. Three round then. And he pours five more drinks, one for himself. And he says, Be your friend, Valorant. Uh, Zin raises his mug to our friend, Valorant. Doris downs one drink and then the next. And Ray will say nothing but like put her glass up. And this time, she's drinking not milk. Holy shit. Goodness is serious. Yeah, man. Well, you, you'd be all very good customers. Tell you what. Pretty sure your uh, your next week is coming due. I'll give you one week for free. You guys have been uh, pretty good customers. I do run a business, but I can always... Uh, Feel for a lost, lost comrade. I've lost several in my day as an adventurer as well. Zen nods and 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 thanks, uh, Dernan. And he continues to drink. His his uh, ale, I assume that's what we got, right? Yeah, sure. So, Dernan uh, says, so, maybe if you want to take your mind off it, uh, why don't we trade stories of adventures? I got a few up my sleeve. It might be nice to hear of one of your adventures. He begins to tell an adventurer story um it's a long one it takes him quite a while but as he he talks about people he's known people he's lost um and several of the adventures he's been on uh he's been sitting here drinking with you guys for at least 30 minutes and as it gets uh near the end of the the story so what about you all tell me some adventure stories and he's been continuing to pour drinks this entire time um, he's pretty much ignoring everybody else. The barmaids are walking around doing stuff. You guys wish to, uh, give him some stories? You can either RP it or just say, yeah, and tell him, say you're telling a story. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll give him the details of, I think, the most recent one, the Xanathar story, because we just lived it. Uh, and it's also probably something he probably cared quite a bit about at this point. Yeah, and then I'll tell him um, about the time when um, Ren left us and then get sad. Slash also angry. And Thoros is going to kind of sit on his history for now. He's more in time. He's what? Going to kind of sit on his history for right now. There's more to come in time. Just not going to be forthcoming with everything right away. Yeah, he's fresh. Yeah, he's... Straight off the boat. Noticing that Thoros has been quiet. He's gonna say, What about you, big one? Sure, you with your, uh... Scary-looking self, you've got some stories. None worth hearing. It's over. It's past. And, um, as you say this, what kind of expression do you have right now? Rather sour. The others of you may roll an insight, should you wish, having just met this creature a few hours previous. Wait, I'm doing it too. Is Cougar going to do an insight? Sure.
Ray, you're about the only one who notices. It definitely looks like Thoros has a story or two. Um, but he does look reluctant to share it. We're able to just like pat him on the shoulder. She broke Ren down. She'll get to him too. Thoros <laughs> pats Ray on the head <laughs> and goes back to drinking. As you guys continue um, talking about past adventures and friends lost, even Dernan now and then sheds a tear. He, uh, he's shocked at the fact Valoran was disintegrated. He thought when you padded your bag, you probably had his body in there um, and that you'd probably be able to res him, but he seems very sad to hear about the fact he was disintegrated. And he asked what you mean to do with the ashes. Well, I had hoped to, uh, or I was thinking that we could take him to um, uh, Il Mater and they might have a place to put him to rest. Um, you know, at least then he has... Uh, somewhere to to be says oh well, you can do that if you wish or I do have another option and something you guys have neglected to see this entire time on this back wall um it seems to stretch from this back wall um and even there's some shelving that takes up quite a bit of the upper wall here and around a good portion of the tavern he says could always join them if that doesn't work out and you notice that along the walls there is um what seem to be plaques with names on them and titles Sitting above these plaques on shelves are urns. This is what we call the Wall of Adventure. Not everybody goes up there, but those who don't wish to be buried often will get a plaque made. We put them up on the shelf. People who go up there, well, they're not coming back, but it's a way that everybody will get to see their name until the day that this tavern falls. They will always be remembered and have a place here. Um, Zin nods. That actually might not be a bad idea. And he'll like look to Ray. I think Val would want that. He could watch over us on our adventures moving forward. Oh, sad. He'd probably want to stand in the urinal near the area of the bathroom. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> He says, well, I know his name. You come back with the title you want him to have. We get the plaque made. No charge to yourselves. And we'll supply the urn as well. If you don't already have one. We don't. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, by this time, it's about like one o'clock in the morning. And, uh, you hear Dernan. Yeah, you, sorry. You, you see most of the people have exited. There's not many people left here. I'm just not removing them from the map. However, you hear the door open. And Dernan looks up. Ah, folks, we're just about to close. And in walk. 
free creatures. Humans wearing red robes, bald tattooed heads, looking directly towards a group. And this is where we're going to end for the night. Ooh, cliffhanger. So, um, that was kind of just something I felt like doing at the end there. So what we're going to do is, um, this probably shouldn't end in combat, but if it does, I don't think we're going to do the level up quite yet. Um, cause after everything you guys have been through, you will get a level up, but it'll be on your long rest. So Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just checking. You know what? Actually, we're, we're gonna, we are gonna fucking finish this right now. As they, they walk in, they're like, don't worry, Turnin. We will not be long. They walk over to this table here where there's nobody sitting. And they put in, they hold up an envelope. They place it on the table. And they look at Ray, smile, turn around, and walk out. Well, that was weird. You don't see many red wizards around here. Bunch of dress wearing sissies. Cougar looks over at, <laughs> at Thoros. You do know Val wore one of, well, a dress, quote unquote, dress similar to that, you know. Probably a kilt. Nah, it, nah, it, it was a robe. Apologies to your friend. No offense intended. Jernan's going to walk over. He's going to pick up the letter. It is sealed with a wax seal. He walks over to Ray and hands it to her. This has got your name on it. Ray will just like put it in her bag for now because she is not dealing with that right this second. Don't you want to read it, huh? No, man, we just lost a friend. Maybe in the morning when we've had some rest. Well, that was supposed to be the cliffhanger as you, you opening it and me going, that's the end of the session, but okay. Just ruin it for me, Ray. It's the yeah. end of the session now, I guess. Jeez. Sorry. But we are going to end there. So give me a moment to outro and then uh, I'll be back in a second. Well, thank you for coming, everybody. I'm sorry about my voice. It's actually getting worse since I've been doing this. Um, I'm going to try to run uh, my other D&D session tomorrow night, uh, Adventures in Wildmount. We're getting near the end of that campaign. <clears throat> um, Monday, I'm supposed to have Halo, and I was thinking about maybe doing a Stormgate uh, stream on Tuesday since it comes out on Tuesday. But I think we're going to have to see uh, how I feel. My, As you can hear just right now, my voice is getting worse and worse. So... Um, hopefully we are going to have some good times coming up in the, uh, next few days. After that, I am going to be gone until the following Monday. So I'm going to be gone for my normal stream schedule. It's unfortunate, but I'm going up North. I need a break. I need to swim in some swim in a, a fucking semi clean river. <laughs> so we are going to see everybody when I get back. Uh, and remember, everybody, be savage to go home. Peace.